Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over uh, tomorrow's UFC card from a betting perspective. And for those of you that are not familiar with my approach to this, um, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to take another 10 minutes and go over this. So for those of you that have been through this already, you can just skip ahead to the picks, I suppose. But again, my original background is from is is running a hedge fund. And even before that, I, all of my my previous wagering history, going all the way back to when I was in college, I mean, I've always been someone who believes that uh, beating the line in general, whether it be beating the stock market, beating a wagering line, anything where you have to have to pay a vig and is being flooded with all kinds of money betting on one side or the other is very difficult to do. Um, and the ego involved in believing that you can out-analyze all of the money that's being piled in uh, is, is an ego that I do not possess. I think it's actually pretty... It's, it's, it is actually quite a statement to say that you are smarter than than the rest of the world, if you think about it, um, or the average of the rest of the world or something like that, especially when, again, you, you're, you it's not even to have to be right. You have to be right at a, a particular rate. You know, it's not just being 1.01% right. You have to be right by a decent amount, actually. But what I found is in all my life is that when you analyze things like this, you can get an edge when it comes to gauging psychology and gauging which way the market is going and which side of any wagering uh, offering is being flooded by bias and is being flooded by popularity or it's being flooded by kind of stuff that has really not much to do with the fight um, and or the, the stock or the basketball game, or whatever. So when I analyze these things, what I'm looking for is value. And the way I determine value is not based on who I think is going to win the fight, and I just think he's going to win it like twice as often as the line indicates. When I'm looking at value, I'm looking at which side, which wagers are probably overvalued, versus which sides are undervalued, not because of the way I think the fight's going to go, but because of the uh, psychology and narratives that's put into each side. Now, what's kind of interesting about MMA, UFC, or any fight, really, but specifically MMA, is the majority of the wagering public kind of hones in on a binary outcome. OK, most fights, people just kind of play out in their minds and they say, OK, either X is going to win and it's going to be this way or Y is going to win and it's going to be that way. OK, and when we're playing props, which is what we're going to be doing, you know, a decent amount of the time here. It stands to reason that those binary outcomes or those outcomes that everybody is just kind of just sure are the only two ways that a fight can go are going to be hopelessly overbet, okay? And the fact of the matter is that in MMA, there's quite a bit more variance than people would believe. And fights can end or not end in, in more ways than the betting public believes and at a higher rate. So if you can hone in on what narrative is most popular, then you can know which line is probably overvalued. And if you can hone in on which narrative is most uh, you know, uh, ignored, you could probably be sure, or at least reasonably sure, that that piece is probably undervalued. And likewise, it goes with fights too. Like if there's one side of a fight that's just gathering so much narrative that that you that that uh, it seems impossible for it not to come in, and yet the line is really just not even reflecting it, you could be sure that that's probably a bad bet. Uh, and I'm using one of last week's uh, fights as an example. Last week, Trevor Peak was fighting a uh, uh, Chipe Maris Mariscal, and the fight was about a pick'em. And yet, I would say about ninety percent of the handicapping experts were on Peak. 
And it doesn't make sense, right? Like, why would it be a pick em if 90% of the people are on one side? That is just classic trap, classic sucker bet type thing. And 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 here's one thing that you got to stay, you know, get used to is that sometimes the sharp money is the sucker money. And it's just the way it goes. Um, the other thing about that fight was was was, was like kind of ridiculous. I mean, I can't believe I didn't have the 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 audacity to play what I really wanted to play. I and mean, I knew that anything with peak or the under was just hopelessly overbet. But I didn't have it in me to bet the FICO's decision, which is what ended up happening. I did bet the over and Mariscal, but but the real bet was going to be to go to, for the fight to go to the distance because there's no way anybody believed that was going to happen, which meant that the line was just completely over undervalued. Nonetheless, um, we're going to go through these fights and we're going to identify, you know, again, the side of these fights, which is probably the most un over undervalued and bet that side. And again, when you get used to this form of analysis, I promise you, I cannot promise you you're going to win at MMA, but I will promise you that you're going to become a more educated, better, uh, not just MMA, but in all facets of wagering, whether it be NBA, NHL, stock market, whatever you want, you start to think about wagering in the way that I do. Um, I think it's going to make you just kind of sharper in general. Okay. Now, again, uh, listen, it is, it is, it is gambling and, you know, it is supposed to be for fun. So don't get don't get too you know carried away by thinking now you've like solved it because it, nothing's been solved. Whenever you're forty percent big or whatever it is, it's gonna be very difficult to make money. But if you're gonna bet the fights anyway, you may as well be on the other side of the public. It's a lot more fun that way anyway. So that's a big introduction. I do apologize for that. Nonetheless, uh, let's go over the rules. The rules are is that we are going to be betting one unit on every fight. And for me, one unit is one hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, I'm not, you know, I don't know why people just are just so hung up on the units or whatever it is. They don't want to say what they're betting. So I'll just tell you, it's always one hundred eighty dollars. Lucky high. That's what we like to bet. And I also am going to be betting every fight. Uh, and again, that's not the greatest money management system in the world, but I don't care. You know, this, we're just going to have some fun with this. And also, uh, we're probably going to end up uh, putting something in the main event that is going to get our money back for when we lose every other fight. Uh, so those are the rules. And the other thing is I am going to put all my bets in live uh, as long as it lets me. Sometimes because I'm on Zoom, DraftKings won't let me put these bets in, but we'll just see. And you'll see uh, uh, that's kind of the way I think about wagering and some of these fights. Here we go. Alexander Romanov versus Blow Guy Ivanov. Now, uh, this to me is one of the easier spots to bet on as a contrarian because this is the narrative that has been completely agreed upon by the entire civilized world is this. So Romanov, he is has a lot of first round upside. Um, he's going to go for these big takedowns early and go for the ground and pound. But as we have seen in the last couple of fights, he has very suspect cardio. So if Ivanov can just survive the first rounds, um, he should probably either take over late or get a decision. So basically, the only narratives that make sense here are Romanov by like round one or maybe round two, or even off late or by decision, which means that you can bet neither of those things. OK, what we are going to bet here, on the other hand, is Romanov by decision. OK, this is listen, he's he reads about the cardio, too. Right. And who's to say that he doesn't commit? to just kind of, uh, you know, to 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 play uh, doing a more boring fight. Who's to say that he can't get a couple of takedowns in round one, you know, take round two off and just kind of finish off in round three and get a decision. The fight does not go one of just two ways. And in this sick case, I'm imagining you're going to get a pretty good price here. You're actually getting kind of a crappy price here. You have Romanoff to win by decision is only plus 350. How is... How is anybody betting that? Well, it's such a bad price that it's just going to have to work. So Romanoff by decision for 180. 
All right, moving on, we have Ivana Petrovich versus Luana Carolina. So I will say say this for a 180 favorite, and we're gonna pull her up. Uh, there's about 80% of the action, I think, coming in on Carolina. Okay. And I think the reason for that has something to do with, with the results of her fight against Lupe Godinez from a couple of fights ago. Like, like Godinez was supposed to be the woman to take Carolina down and she and, and, and control her. And she was a huge favorite in that fight. And yet Carolina was way too big and kept her off. And the super sharp money actually was in on Carolina. So now basically everybody's trying to repeat that by playing Carolina again, just assuming that she's going to be able to stuff the Petrovich takedowns in the same way. So this is kind of a weird situation where Petrovich is probably the undervalued fighter. Okay. Even though it's, you know, she's, she's minus 215. So what we're going to do is we are going to play Petrovich uh, uh, to finish, and we're going to pick up our favorite round here. So Petrovich round two, oh my God, is plus 700. Oh, let's go. Ivana Petrovich by, well, we don't, I don't want to say uh, you know, submission or knockout. That's, that's asking me a little, for a little bit too much analysis. So we're going to go Petrovich round two for 180. All right, Guram Kuteladza versus Elvis Brenner. So uh, here's the thing. Uh, you're not really getting too much action on the money line here because what you're getting is, Kutel is, is, is Kuteladza is like minus like 500. So people are saying, well, he's minus 500. I'm not laying that, but he's probably going to win. The only thing I would say is that him by finish is a prop which has not been talked about too much. Most people are actually picking him to win by decision. So we are going to pick him to win inside the distance. So what we're going to do is the same thing as, as the Petrovich one. We're going to pick him for round two. So Kudalaze, round two, plus 450. Or 180. Okay, moving on. Yana Santos versus uh, Carol Hosa. All right. I hear that Santos is really not even committed to the sport anymore, that she's terrible off of her back, that Hosa in her last fight, you know, she was kind of struggling for a while, but she figured it out in the third round. And for a 175-150 fight, I have not seen a single tout expert amateur whatever on the santos side as if she were like a minus plus 700 so i'm just going to presume this is kind of a trap and we're going to take yona yana santos for one plus the 150 where is that yana santos plus 150 for 180 now at the end we're going to put in stake all singles at the end all right um Yo Anderson Brito versus Weston Wilson. So here it's really just been a question of whether Brito is going to finish by sub in, in round one by submission or by decision. Um, so, excuse me, either by submission or by KO. No one wants to bet the money line here, obviously, at minus, minus 1,000. And nobody wants to bet Wilson here because they think he has no chance or whatever. But people are really trying to hone in on this Brito either by sub or Brito by knockout in the first round. So can't bet that. Um, those are probably hopelessly overvalued. Let's take a look at some of these other round props. So this is like amazing. So like Brito in round one is minus 225. But Brito in round two is plus 225. If you can get Wilson to just survive for a round, and now you're live at plus 550, Let's go. So you Anderson Brito, round two for 180. Um, okay, uh, Renat Fakradinov versus Kevin Lee. So this is a terrible stylistic matchup for Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee is off like a year and a half and two ACL injuries, okay? Blew out his ACLs. And Fakradinov, it's just it's just a, a a grappling machine. He's got a cardio edge. He's got a size edge. Kevin Lee is basically washed. 
And this is basically free money for Fak Radinov. So we are going to take Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee, just plus the 180. I don't know if it's going to be submission or decision. But Kevin Lee plus the 180 for exactly 180. Okay, Bruno Feheya versus Nursultan Ruzibov. People, I don't think, can help it. I mean, you have Feheya, who's just coming off a big first-round KO, and Ruzibayov is 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 he's kind of suffering from kind of this uh, this problem of having won too many fights. You know, he's he's fought forty-two fights since you know he's been in the UFC, and as a result, people are just presuming that he's just completely fraudulent because, you know, listen, he's been fighting people in the very lower levels. But that doesn't mean that he's bad, okay? Just because he happened to have fought a lot of fights doesn't necessarily mean that he's bad. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the uh, at the odds here. And you're expecting to see Fajaya probably like minus 300, but in reality, it's only like minus 215. So we're going to presume that Ruzaboy has got something. So plus 185 for 180. I'm going to pause this a second. Oh, okay. um, all right, moving on. Wait, are we, are we back? We're recording, right? Yeah, we're recording. Um, Ishmael Bonfim against Benoit Santini. Uh, this one is a little tricky because you are getting a decent amount of Santini uh, love here. Um, so there's really no real advantage on the money line. So again, we're just going to try to try to come up with something here. And as far as narratives go, um, I guess the best thing I can describe is Santini's main path to victory is being aggressive and and grappling, uh, where Bonfim is going to be, you know, more of a knockout guy. So I guess the the real, I mean, if you really wanted to do the contrarian thing, is maybe play Bonfim either by decision or even by submission. Let's take a look at this. That would be actually pretty fun if we can get that off. Israel Bonfim by decision is plus two is plus two hundred. By submission, it's plus 450. I think we're going to try that. So remember, if, if Santini is going to be going for takedown, there's going to be all kinds of, of grappling, all kinds of, of scrambles. I mean, maybe Bonfim gets gets on top of him somehow and gets a submission. So we are going to try that. Bonfim, and no one's playing this, by the way. Plus 450 by submission for 180. Um. Ariana Lipsky versus Melissa Gatto. This to me is extremely easy. Despite Lipsky's last performance, the fact remains that she is hopeless uh, in the grappling. And when she goes to, to, the, to, to the mat, she almost never gets up. And Melissa Gatto is a perfect match to just completely take advantage of that. So uh, we are going to all take Melissa Gatto. Some people are taking Melissa Gatto inside the distance, but at the very least, we know she's going to win. So as a result, we are going to take Ariana Lipsky. Lipsky plus 190 for 180. Um, where are we? Okay, Michael Morales versus Max Griffin. So this is a tough, this is apparently a tough one for Michael Morales. You know, Max Griffin is really, really tough. Um it's possible that that Max Griffin could teach a is going to teach him a what they call it, a vet lesson, and this line is just way too wide apparently. And Griffin is a pretty popular underdog, so it's only a question for us: is what round we pick Morales to knock him out? So let's take a look. Morales round one plus three hundred. That's actually not bad, but I think we're going to stick to. Maybe just him by inside the distance in general. Yeah, let's just let's not let's not get greedy. Let's not pick around here. We'll just see Morales by TKO or submission plus one fifty. We'll just take that.
All right. Uh, moving along. Remember, we don't have that many here. We're already, I think, at the co-main event, which is uh, Dazmir Izmogulov versus Grant Dawson. So this one's going to be really, really rough, okay? Because it's entirely clear what's going to happen in this fight. Dawson is going to be very aggressive and going for all kinds of takedowns, all right? And Izmogulov is super-duper technical, and he is going to try to stay at range, try to be, you know, try to touch him up on the feet. And if Grant Dawson wins, it's going to either be like a whole bunch of takedowns or a submission. And if Demir Izmogulov wins, he's just going to be way too classy and, you know, and win a nice boring decision as he usually does. So as a result, we are going to take Demir inside the distance and let's see how we want to do this. Uh, Isma Gulov inside the distance plus 500. Let's go. All right. Um, so, so far we have 11 bets, which we can't win. All right. Let's, let's go over them before we even get to the last fight. Roman off by decision. I mean, I got to be out of my mind. Right. The guy only has three minutes of cardio. How he's going to win a decision. Well, find out. Petrovich round two uh, against Carolina. Why do we do this? And Carolina is really good at stuffing the takedowns. And and um, Petrovich is just, you know, he's, she's basically fought nobody. So well, how on earth is she going to finish her against the super sharp? Everybody wants to play Lu uh, Luana Carolina. Well, we'll find out. Katalaze, um, listen, he's definitely going to be a big favorite, but he's probably more in line for decision than anything else. So we'll try him in round two. Now, Yana Santos, she should be plus 300. I don't know. For all the people that are playing Hosa, I can't imagine why this is only 150. So we'll take it. Joe Anderson Brito, it's only a question of where, how he finishes in round one, whether it's going to be him in round one by submission or him in round two by, by knockout, in round one by knockout. So we're going to play him in round two, plus 550. Kevin Lee washed with two freaking ACL tears. How is he going to be uh, – uh, uh, Fakradinov coming off of that performance. This is ridiculous. So, plus 180, we will try it. Um, Bruno Fajeo off the first round KO, 9-0 and against the total fraud, Ruzipoev. Basically fought, guard, basically fought janitors and taxi cab drivers. I mean, this is a freaking mismatch. Well, we'll find out. Ruzipoev, plus 185. Um, Ishmael Bonfim, uh, listen... It's no secret, you know, Benoit Saint-Denis is, he's a, he's a tough dude. He's from French special forces. He's going to bring the heat. He's going to bring, bring the action. And he's a really, really live dog. The only way that we ever bet on theme is just being very technical, maybe get a KO, you know, because of his boxing, but no way he's going to submit this guy. Well, if he does, we're getting four and a half to one. Uh, Melissa Gatto is going to just basically just dominate Ariel and Lipsky on the mat. This is basically free money, but we don't feel like that. So we're going to take the plus 190 and hope it doesn't happen. Morales is probably going to be you know, taught a vet lesson by Max Griffin, but at the very least, he's certainly going to go to decision. Well, if it does, we're going to lose because we have him plus 150 inside the distance. Now, this one's obviously pretty easy. You know, this fight, the Dawson uh, Ismagula fight, extremely. You know, binary, right? Either Ismagulov just wins kind of a good striking based uh, decision, or Dawson just kind of either submits him or just gets all kinds of takedowns. The one result that can never happen is Ismagulov inside. Well, we'll try a plus 500. So we played all these fights and we have 11 fights and we're going to lose them all probably. So what we need to do then is we need to come up with something in the main event that's paying at least 11 to 1. And listen, this is. This is like heavy duty analysis. Uh, so we're going to start with what's 11 to one, but it's got to fit the anti-narrative that we talk about. So here's the deal with uh, Sean Strickland against Abus Magomedov. So Abus Magomedov is coming in. He has a big, he had a knockout over Dustin Stolzitz in 19 seconds. And before that, he hadn't fought for a year and a half. Basically the idea is this, okay. As is Magulov, oh, excuse me, Magomedov, He's either going to take Strickland out in the first two rounds or Strickland is just going to take over and either get a late finish 
or win a decision. So what can you not bet? You cannot bet Magomedov round one or two. You cannot bet Strickland round even round three, four, or five. So let's take a look and see what else we can get that's paying 11 to one, right? Round props. And there it is. Strickland round two plus 1100. That can get all our money back. Magomedov round. Yeah, he, he this isn't going to work. Magomedov by decision is not enough. So it looks like we're either going to be Strickland round two or Strickland round three. Now, this is where, you know, this is the heavy duty analysis here, because technically, if I bet him in round two and he wins, it doesn't guarantee that I make money because it's only plus eleven hundred. Hmm. Where if I go up to round three, I get that extra plus, you know, I get to fourteen hundred. But now I'm almost in the Strickland late category. Ah, I don't know what I want to do here. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's go for it. We'll go Strickland round three plus the fourteen hundred. So this is the way we go 0 and 12, losing $2,160. If you guys go along with me, hey, maybe your units are $18 and you'll only lose 216. Or you can make, what is that? $1,161 or whatever. Um, but listen, this is the way I analyze things. I think this is a fun way to, 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 to do it. And I do promise you this, that everything that we're bet on, betting on is stuff that very few people are betting on. And the thesis, therefore, is that that's probably the best value out there. Um, that will do it. Good luck, everybody. And uh, I'll see you next week.